Welcome to the EADV podcast, the official podcast of the European Academy of Dermatology and Venereology. I'm Adriana and I'm your host. Every month, the JADV chooses and highlights four articles in a section called Editor's Picks. Today we explore the Editor's Picks for July 2023. Diagnosing neonates with atopic dermatitis non-invasively. Quality of life in children with localised scleroderma. Speaking up for chronic hand eczema. Move over chat GBT and leave room for students to learn from perceptual learning modules. But before we get into that... Get ready to experience cutting-edge science and innovation in dermatology and venerology at the upcoming EDV Congress in Berlin, Germany, 11th to 14th of October 2023. The EDV Congress is one of the largest and prestigious international gatherings dedicated to dermatology and venerology, providing a platform for the brightest minds in research, clinicians, and top industry professionals to come together and share knowledge, make connections, and foster scientific collaboration. The diverse, interactive program covering the full AZ of hot topics also includes innovative, hands-on workshops, subspecialty sessions, and industry sessions. The exhibition hall will provide opportunities for attendees to explore the latest technologies, treatments, and products in the field to date. The wait is over. Tickets to attend the Congress in Berlin are on sale now. Be sure to check edvcongress2023.org to learn how to participate and for more information about the event. Did you know that GADV clinical practice has an open call for papers on skin diversity? With a patient-focused approach, EADV's open access journal aims to address the underrepresentation of skin of color in dermatology practice and research. We welcome a wide range of submissions for this special issue, including original and review articles, case reports, and more. Submit your proposal to GAECP at EADV.org by the 31st of July. Final manuscript submissions are due by the 30th of November 2023. Don't miss this opportunity to contribute to the representation of all patient populations. Find out more on eadv.org. And now, the editor's picks. Diagnosing neonates with atopic dermatitis non-invasively. The terms infant eczema and atopic dermatitis often carry with them diagnostic challenges, as well as discrepancies between parental reports and the clinician's diagnosis. To date, non-invasive accurate diagnostic biomarkers are lacking. Yamamoto Hanada et al. previously studied the impact of early atopic dermatitis treatment on food allergies. In this month's issue, they present a rigorous prospective study of the molecular pathogenesis of early-onset atopic dermatitis among 98 one-month-old infants. There was a family history of AD in 47% of the infants, and 41% of them had neonatal acne. A non-invasive RNA analysis in sebum oil blotting film identified molecular changes that characterise the pathophysiology of AD in infants, downregulation of genes related to barrier function and elevation of inflammatory marker expression, i.e. genes related to Th2, Th17 and Th22 type immune responses. They also revealed that neonatal acne in some infants at one month could be predictive of subsequent development of AD by mRNAs in sebum. Figure 1 shows that results of the gene analysis differ between healthy and AD infants at 1 and 2 months. This new technology can enable us to have early and objective detection of AD as well as early treatment interventions in young infants. The authors conclude with a hopeful message that they plan to continue studying this area in larger populations with an expanded age range. Quality of life in children with localised scleroderma It is vital that children and adolescents with localised scleroderma, also known as morphia, have the opportunity to self-report on meaningful and relevant aspects of their health and well-being. However, possibly due to it being a rare disease, its impact on childhood health-related quality of life has been understudied. Ziegler et al. comprising a team of clinicians and methodologists created the Localised Scleroderma Quality of Life Index based on rigorous patient-centred feedback for this purpose. They used a relatively large representative sample of responses from over 100 children and adolescents with a median age of 15 years across the United States and Canada. Their quantitative analysis supported the reliability and validity of two localised scleroderma quality of life index subscores when used in a clinical setting, pain and physical functioning and body image and social support. The authors point out that this may be interesting to researchers and clinicians who may expect certain interventions to improve one of these aspects but not the other, and that on a practical level, the two subscales can be administered separately. Speaking up for chronic hand eczema 
Ronch and colleagues present their qualitative study of the perspectives of individuals living with chronic hand eczema. This condition impacts many domains for patients, from their ability to work and sleep disturbances to concerns about the appearance of their hands. A total of 60 European study participants who were treated for their chronic hand eczema in seven outpatient specialised clinics described the high social and emotional impact of the disease. Five main themes and also subthemes were identified. They reported valuing physicians who listen to them and keep searching for solutions. In the long run, it was important for patients to accept living with chronic hand eczema and learn how to take care of themselves. The authors carefully discuss where their study reaches similar and sometimes diverging findings compared to other literature. Their focus on advocating for the patient to speak up and voice their needs is a good reminder for all clinicians caring for patients with chronic dermatological conditions. Move over ChatGBT and leave room for students to learn from perceptual learning modules. This title and interesting figure may have purposefully caught your eye when scanning the journal. This month, Salova and colleagues present a study about an eye-catching method of learning for students. Methods of perceptual learning have been used to enhance intuitive recognition and both visual and diagnostic skills. In this study regarding undergraduate dermatology training, they observed that perceptual learning modules increased diagnostic accuracy, fluency and student perceived confidence along with long-term learning retention with post-tests at 6 to 12 months. Figure 2 illustrates the mistakes that occurred when making a diagnosis. For example, the actinic keratosis was most frequently confused with squamous cell carcinoma. The authors conclude that perceptual learning modules can be successfully integrated with traditional teaching and used as self-assessment tools or online exams. Moreover, they believe that there is extensive potential for a wider use of perceptual learning to improve non-analytical visual skills in dermatology e.g. in postgraduate education, dermatology education of general practitioners and medical education in general. Our first article was mRNAs in skin surface lipids unveiled atopic dermatitis at one month by Yamamoto Hanada and co-authors. Our second article was cross-sectional quantitative validation of the paediatric localised scleroderma quality of life instrument a disease-specific patient-reported outcome measure by Ziegler and co-authors. Our third article was Chronic Hand Eczema in Europe, Patient Experiences and Perspectives in Qualitative Interviews by Ronsch and co-authors. Our fourth article was Perceptual Learning in Dermatology, a Finnish cohort study of undergraduate medical students by Salava and co-authors. Of course, all of the research presented today can be found in the Journal of the European Academy of Dermatology and Venereology. Though you can find free access and open access articles, EADV members benefit greatly by having access to all articles and content. Before you go, a quick favor. If you're a regular listener of our podcast, we would love to hear from you. Your feedback will help us improve the show and develop episodes that you are interested in hearing. To participate in this short survey, simply follow the link in the show notes of this episode. Thank you for your support. It means a lot. We look forward to hearing from you. Until the next episode, take care of your skin.